Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and today is the first day of Revenge Week. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I put up a poll a few days ago and asked if you guys would like an escalating week of revenge, starting at petty and ending somewhere around nuclear. So 19% of you guys said you would love it and a staggering 72% said bring on all the revenge. I want to thank everyone in the comments as well who told me instead of ending on nuclear revenge, ending on supernova revenge. I had a look at the subreddit and there are some crazy stories on there. So enough of me talking. Today we're starting on r slash petty revenge. Here we go. Rude old woman thinks she can insult me behind my back. A few years back, I worked at a garden center in a time with a pretty large population of Italian immigrants. I don't look particularly Italian myself, but I am, and my Italian is passable. I was mainly a cashier, and to be honest, I really loved doing it. The clientele was significantly nicer than at the grocery store I previously worked at, and I enjoyed having the occasional chat about plants with people. Because this was a mainly Italian area, I did deal with a lot of older Italian people whose English wasn't very good. Most of the time, they would make an effort to speak English, I would do my best in Italian and everything would work out well. One day, however, I was at the till cashing out an elderly woman and her adult daughter. The woman was trying to haggle with me about the prices, obviously not something I can change as a cashier, and generally complaining about things that are far beyond my control. I was polite and courteous and eventually the old woman gave up, realising she wouldn't get any freebies from me, and then the tirade began. To her daughter, who seemed mortified and kept telling her to stop in hushed tones, she began insulting me in Italian. This went on throughout the entirety of the transaction and I pretended to be oblivious to it, even though on the inside I was fuming. Finally, the woman pays, while telling her daughter she thought I was going to shortchange her, takes her bags and as I hand her the receipt, I tell her in a cheerful tone in Italian, have a great day. The old woman looked absolutely horrified and basically ran out of the store as quickly as she could. Her daughter laughed and gave me a big smile as she left. I saw the old lady a few more times after that, and every other time I saw her, she was always very polite. Waste my time interviewing for a job? I'll get you back, even if I have to wait 20 years. Around 1990, I was looking to change jobs and landed an interview at a large broking firm. When I got there, right from the start, it was clear that the guy interviewing wanted to be anywhere but doing this. He wouldn't make eye contact and looked uninterested as I talked through my experience and areas of knowledge. I knew it wasn't me because I'd always been good in interviews and was relaxed and confident without being cocky and arrogant. I was dressed smartly in a business suit etc so the interview didn't last long and was punctuated by him looking at his watch and staring out the office window. I never understood why he didn't just call ahead and cancel the interview if there was no prospect of hiring me. Anyway, I wasn't desperate and left thinking I would not like to work for such a jerk. So 20 years pass, and I'm now working for a large corporation in charge of commissioning professional services and the like. Jerkface has struck out on his own and had a small business consultancy. He contacts me to run through a sales pitch, obviously not remembering who I am. As soon as he arrived, I reminded him of the strange interview and that I didn't get hired. To my great amusement, this threw him off course and there followed a lackluster run through of his company's services. I listened through it all without making any comment and at the end just said, thanks, I'll let you know if I need anything. Don't be a D at a haunted house. So there is this really, really, really popular haunted house where I live. We'll call it Super Hunts. I finally got to work at Super Hunts one year and I loved every single minute of it. It was the best thing for a super dramatic person like me. Now, there is one huge rule about Super Hunts and basically any haunted house. Don't touch the actors and don't touch stuff. Super Hunt goes all out. We have animatronics, puppets, floors that move, etc. It's the works. And some of the stuff we have, well, it costs some money and we also don't want it damaged. But of course, people are dumbasses. One night, I wasn't really in the mood for people messing with me or with stuff, so I scared a few people. But one guy? One guy was kind of just asking to be scared. Big time. Now, one of the best ways to scare people is to pretend you're not real. I did that all the time. The outfit I wore made it look like I was an old maid wearing a bonnet, so people couldn't see my face if I looked down. Now, I heard this guy coming. He kept saying things weren't scary and I glanced up to seeing messing with the stuff in my room. He was just being really annoying, loud and making fun of people being scared. Time to scare him. I slowly go behind him. He doesn't notice me. His friends do, but I can tell they're tired of him. They didn't say anything. Just waited for me to do my thing. I inhaled and let out a blood-curdling scream. I swear, if this guy could have, I think he would have jumped out of his skin. He shouted, 
jumped up and then fell on the floor. He looked up at me with this terrified look and I just stared at him. Now, instead of getting up and walking, he just crawls. I've had people do this before, but it was nothing new. But I don't stop. I just grin at him and start to laugh. That is what I was best at, the creepy laugh. I'd start off soft, then get more loud and manic. Soon I'm cackling like mad and this guy is crawling to get to the other room. His friends are dying of laughter. And things only got worse for him because the room next to mine, it's the chainsaw room. So once he crawled away from me, I heard him screaming again as one of my co-workers rushed at him with the toy chainsaw. My mum's petty revenge. When I was a child, I'm 67, my mum had borrowed some money from a loan company. She told him when she borrowed it that my dad got paid every two weeks and the following Friday was payday. She would be in that morning and pay them off just as soon as she cashed my dad's check. The bill was like $65 or so. I can't remember exactly how much since this was over 50 years ago. Two or three times a day, my mum would get a call from the loan company telling her she needed to come in and pay the bill. She would tell them, my husband gets paid next Friday, I'll be in then and I'll pay it off. On Thursday before my dad got paid the next day, she came to school at 1.30 and signed myself and three younger siblings out of school. She went to the bank and bought $65 worth of pennies. When we got home, she set us kids down on the floor with a large paper grocery bag. She puts the rolls of pennies on the floor by us. We had a ball on rolling the pennies and putting them in the bag. The next day, while we were at school, she took all those pennies to the loan company. She'd loosened the bottom of both sacks. She supported both sacks with her hand. When she got to the counter, she said that she'd come to pay off the loan. She set the sack on the counter, then turned around and started to walk out. Mrs. So-and-so, what's this? Then the lady behind the counter picked up the sacks. Pennies went all over the floor. You have to come and count these for us. How do we know there's $65 worth here? If there's not, don't call me. It's your problem now. Petty Revenge at KFC I don't know if this should belong here or not. TLDR at bottom. Let me know what you think if you end up reading this. This happened a while back. I wasn't directly involved, but I thought I'd post this regardless. So in my area, KFC has this deal that sells 9 pieces of chicken for $9.95 Australian dollars every Tuesday. I don't know if other states in Australia also do this. So basically, my mum asked me to get some hot and spicy chicken as she hated the original recipe. She's Asian and grew up with spicy food. So I walk into the KFC and I place the order for the 9 pieces hot and spicy chicken, 1 large chips and 1 large potato and gravy. The cashier told me they didn't have any hot and spicy readily available and asked if I wouldn't mind waiting 10 minutes, so I did. A few other customers ordered some hot and spicy, but just like me, they would have to wait for a bit to get it. After a bit, the cashier then calls up order numbers to ask the customer if they would like to have a full refund, original recipe chicken instead, or to wait a little extra longer, about 5 minutes. Anyway, enter this guy, let's call him DH, with two noisy children. So I'm sitting by a seat nearby the counter waiting to receive my order, waiting patiently, and as the workers were getting the chicken ready, DH starts yelling out to them to hurry up, being rude. Other people order chicken before DH, and he basically demands to get his chicken immediately or get it for free. Meanwhile, some customers seemed to be irritated over the noise the children were making and how DH wasn't controlling them. Now, remember that the cashier gave customers the choice to either get refunded, original recipe, or wait for the hot and spicy to be ready. And for the people who had to wait for the hot and spicy orders, they ended up getting double what they ordered in discretion. When I got mine, I got two large chips, two large potato and gravy, and a lot more chicken. I heard what DH ordered, as he said it a bit louder than most customers. Meanwhile, I noticed other customers got two times extra of what they ordered when they picked up their stuff, but DH didn't know that they were being compensated, and when he got his order, he only got what he asked for, no extras to compensate. Afterwards, he said he should have gotten the order for free, but because people were showing signs that his presence was pissing them off, and because he had two kids with him, decided not to make a scene and left. TLDR KFC compensates waiting customers double everything for waiting longer, and D-Head with noisy children acts up towards workers, and workers don't compensate him for waiting. Wow, so this is a little bit of petty revenge meets entitled parents, but 15 minutes for double your order? Like, that's amazing value for money, to be honest. He broke my arm. I broke his balls. This happened many a year ago, when I was age 11 or 12, and my brother is 16, during summer vacation. It was the beginning of July and all the fireworks stands had just opened up for those of us who wanted to celebrate the old USA by blowing bits of it up. A fireworks stand opened up about a quarter of a mile from our house and my brother was finally old enough to purchase fireworks without an adult. I, by state law, or maybe parental law, was still too young to stay home alone. 
My brother decided he wanted to go to the fireworks stand and he didn't want to wait until 5pm when my mum got home. So he told me it was okay for us to go. I strapped on my rollerblades and to boomtown we went. On the way home is when my bro decided to be an a-hole. He picked up a stick and threw it right in front of my rollerblades. Down I went, landing badly on my arm. My mum was pissed she had to leave work early and take me to the doctor for my broken arm. But eventually I came home with a bright pink fiberglass cast on my arm and my mum wasn't the only one pissed. Being a younger sister, I had to get my revenge. So I waited until a few days later when we had to go somewhere, I forgot where. My brother was walking just behind me and to the left, the side of my broken arm. I swung my arm forward for momentum and then rammed it backwards and nailed him in the balls. Down he went. My mum, who hadn't been paying attention until my brother's high-pitched shriek of pain and outrage, I welled up with tears and clutched my arm and told my mum that my brother was walking too close and ran into my wrist and now it hurt really bad. I don't know if my brother bought it, but my mum did. I was, after all, the wounded one. She told my brother it was an accident and to walk it off. The best part was, if he retaliated, he was effing with his injured baby sister and already on thin ice for breaking my arm to begin with. If he got caught, he would have had the parental wrath of God rain down on him. Edit. Wow, I didn't expect this to blow up so big. Also, thanks for the silver, kind stranger. Holy cow. And a gold now? <laughs> so something kind of similar to this happened to me when I was younger, but without the revenge, unfortunately. My brother is four years older than me, and when I was about 10 or 11, I think, we were messing around at my granny's house. We would always play fight because we loved watching WWE, and I think at the time my brother had just started playing rugby in school, so he decided to practice his tackles on me. So with two big cushions under my arm, he tackled me onto the sofa, and whatever way he must have landed on me, he fractured my arm. The worst part about it was I went to my granny and told her that my arm was really sore and she kind of just shrugged me off and told me not to worry about it. I think she gave me some paracetamol and then propped my arm up on a cushion for me to go to sleep. And when I got home the next day I was still cradling my arm and I think that was finally when the adults decided to believe me. They took me to the hospital and I came out with a huge plaster cast on my arm. It was not bad, I did get out of doing homework for a while at school, <laughs> I think for about maybe 4 weeks or 5 weeks or something like that. So that's all for r slash petty revenge. I really hope you enjoyed day one of Revenge Week and you stick around as it's only going to get better. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.